This is the final day of climate talks in Durban, South Africa, and it's turned into a cliffhanger. In the morning, the European Union announced it was making progress toward a compromise for securing more reductions in greenhouse gas emissions. But by midday, protesters were jamming the hallways, denouncing the deal as too weak, and talks were suspended until late at night. FSRN's Brian edwards Teekert is there and brings us this report. If anything comes out of these talks, it will probably be a compromise brokered by the European Union. Here's how it would work. Some industrialized nations agree to new greenhouse gas cuts under the Kyoto Protocol now. Everyone else agrees to bring the rest of the world's nations into a more comprehensive treaty at some point in the future. Here is EU Environment Minister Connie Hedegaard. What we have seen over the last few days is that the support of the roadmap is growing all the time. OSIS, the LDCs and the African group have expressed very strong support. The idea is that the countries that haven't had to make cuts under Kyoto, large developing countries like China and the United States, which never ratified the treaty, would agree in principle that they should all be subject to some kind of legally binding treaty in the future. At least that was the idea. By midday, the language of the draft text had been watered down to call for a legal framework applicable to all. Presumably, the vague language is meant to appease the United States, which seems allergic to the words legally binding. As for timing, the draft calls for the new framework to be established by 2015 and to take effect by the year 2020. By the estimates of many scientific bodies, however, that will be too late to head off catastrophic climate change. The last speaker during the morning plenary was a representative of the youth non-governmental organizations at these talks. Her name is Anjalia Potterai. The most stark betrayal of your generation's responsibility to ours is that you call this ambition. Where is the courage in these rooms? Now is not the time for incremental action. In the long run, these will be seen as the defining moments of an era in which narrow self-interest prevailed over science, reason, and common compassion. As she stepped away from the podium, Apaderai did something that a generation of activists have learned at occupation protests across the world. And her calls to the crowd set the tone for the rest of the day. By the time the plenary was to reconvene at 3 p.m., hundreds of protesters had massed in the hallways of the conference, carrying signs that read, Don't Kill Africa, singing freedom songs, and delivering speeches. Journalists and diplomats crowded the balconies of the conference center to watch as blue-shirted UN security hemmed in the crowd. Greenpeace International Executive Director Kumi Naidu. People are dying now. 350,000 lives are being lost now in Africa and other parts of the developing world. People who have had no responsibility, who don't even have a single light bulb in their homes, are the ones that are paying the price now. So we feel a uh, situation where the U.S. wants to push things back to 2020. They want to drag out this thing forever. It's completely unacceptable. We wanted a deal in Copenhagen already for a fair, ambitious and legally binding climate treaty. We have nothing along those lines here up for discussion. A few diplomats joined the protest. This man from Egypt told the protesters that his whole country was watching. In my country, we now we are listening to the young people. In my country, now we are listening to the young people. They are the future. They are the future. They have the right for the future. They have the right for the future. Maldivian Environment Minister Mohammed Aslam joined the protest as well. He didn't give a speech, but he sent a message back from the plenary. Bobby Peak of Groundwork South Africa. The minister said, and the minister said you cannot compromise with death. You cannot compromise with death. So there's no compromise that the island states, no compromise that the island states will make at this negotiation. Will make at this negotiation. And that was the message that was delivered. The negotiations require a consensus to move anything forward, so even a small nation like the Maldives can spike a deal it doesn't like. Midway through the afternoon, the talks suspended until late in the evening, and diplomats hurried off to try to salvage a deal in closed-door meetings. If the talks don't fall apart completely, they're expected to continue into Saturday morning. 
Brian Edwards Tiekert, Free Speech Radio News, Durban, South Africa.